It's a hospital and everyone is asleep. The black guy is up and is on watch. He drinks water and is shocked by the robotic walking sounds. Machines are visibly present. He hides. There are several of them. They pass by him ahead. He sees them going towards the corridor. He takes his bag to leave but stops and turns back towards the corridor. He silently alerts Sarah about the robots. They get out to find Emily. They can hear screams. He gets to Ash, but he's not there. The babies are awake. He blocks the door, making visibility minimal. Ash is sitting somewhere with his baby's ultrasound photo. Sarah and Tom are looking for Emily. Ash hears sounds and moves towards them. The black guy arrives, warns him and asks him to come along right now. Ash runs the other way for the babies. Sarah and Tom come across Emily. There are screams. They leave. People are running. One of them is killed. A woman tries to escape. She crawls, but it catches her, holds her, and kills her. The black man asks Ash to leave the kids and head back. They are on their way to the rendezvous point. She feels it again, and it's increasing. They get inside while one of the machines is there. It comes towards them and turns the other way. They are hiding behind desk walls. It gets near enough to see them and stops. The babies cry and it runs for them. Ash and the black man are at the meeting point. The others arrive and they leave altogether. Ash asks them to leave him to save the babies. They want to leave, but he finally takes him along. Here, the room is locked, and the machine is trying to break in. It moves to another door and gets in from there, removing obstacles from the blocked door. Here, a boy is standing at a grave. He hears the same pulsating sound. He moves along the road towards home, taking a different path to find out what he's hearing, and ends up at the spot where something had fallen earlier that night. Someone calls him. The sounds are coming from it. The roads are empty. They still have 10 kilometers to go. She grew up there. Her son is 15 years old. She tells him she was 15 when he was born. At first, people thought she was his sister, but when they knew the reality, they thought of her as a paid girl. He says that won't happen. Here at the observatory, the music is still on. She says she can probably find them and determine their location using her system by restarting their position controlling system and connecting it to a generator. But this way, they can find them as well. They start working to restart the system. He takes the final cable to start. In the city, they are hiding behind a car. Emily is losing her sight again. They move on. They get into a hotel. She thanks him and moves ahead. He's on watch. He gets to Ash and says he couldn't have done anything to save them. He says his girlfriend wanted him to take care of them. His girlfriend, Haley, was 14 weeks pregnant with a boy. He takes the photo back and leaves. She puts flowers on Dan's grave and stands there for a while. Bill says they can stay for another day, but if she wants to go, they must leave immediately. He says nothing. He goes after her. In the Alps, she's activating the system. It's still pulsating. The feedback potentiometer is working. The receivers move and are receiving information. She has the locations, but they are changing, and the signal is getting weak and disappearing. It finally stops. The last coordinates were 44.7472 degrees north, 5.7691 degrees east. He says they are here in this valley. The machines might have known about the observatory's location. He asks Nathan to get a team ready. He will leave some soldiers for her security. She wants to go. He says they will leave in an hour. In the city, the black man asks if she needs water. She drinks it. She was practicing piano with her hands. He's from Sudan. There was a civil war there. He came here to escape the war. She says, and here is all this. That's why he knows how to use a gun. She wants to keep one as well. She wants to know about his home. He sits with her. His village was south of the White Nile River. It was beautiful. She's getting ready to leave. She picks something Johannes kept for her upcoming birthday. He helps her put on a vest. He asks if it's too tight. They move on. They have almost reached her home. She opens the door and gets in first. She calls for Sasha, mom or dad. Nobody is there. She runs out of the house to look outside. He checks family photos. She comes back. There's a gun here. She goes out again. She asks him to leave her hand. Both move in. Ash is looking for suitable clothes to wear. He takes off the gown and puts on a new winter outfit. He checks his girlfriend's ring. He goes to the black guy, opens his bag, takes the gun and quietly leaves. Chloe goes around and sits at the table. She says if Sasha's dead, she's to blame since she just wanted to stay alone and sent him here. He pisses her off sometimes. He says she didn't know it would happen. She and Sasha both said they hate each other. She really loves him. Jonathan has to believe that the family is alive to keep his courage. He doesn't know how to use a gun. He's an ads designer for soap and toothpaste. There are sounds. She goes down into the garage. An armed man is here and asks Jonathan to get down in French. Sasha is here. He's fine. 
Grandpa and Granny are dead. She says she'll never leave him again. Her brother is here and she's shocked to see him. She introduces Jonathan and Sasha to each other. He says on their way back, grandparents were getting shocked. People were dying massively and he couldn't save them. He says they have buried mom and dad in the garden. She is going to check them. Noah asks Alexis to go along with them. His colleague asks them if they would like to eat something. He thanks him for bringing her home. He asks if he knows why they're killing us. Noah says, perhaps for the same reason for which we keep killing each other. They must be coming here as well, since there are people alive here, and they want to kill them all. The black man wakes up, sees his gun is missing. He asks them if someone took it and goes to check for Ash. He's on his way to the hospital. He's going after him. He leaves. In the Alps, in the forest, they are moving across, and it has gotten a little dark. He holds and stops them, since it's too quiet. After a while, there's a movement. Blood falls on her cheek. A soldier is killed. They fire at the machines. She falls down and covers her ears. Mukrani gets to her, helps her up, and they leave. It's evening now. Noah is on watch. She asks him to rest for a while. She kisses his forehead, goes to the door, and leaves. He opens his eyes again. She goes to another room. She sees her parents' stuff. It's their room. She smells their clothes and cries. Noah, outside, his hand is shivering. Alexis opens the garage and goes on watch. He gets inside and goes to her room. He's there to check on her. He asks about Sasha, sits with her, and says in the attack everyone outside died except him. It's strange. She says perhaps it is. He praises Jonathan as a nice guy, a little cowardly but nice. He asks if she had slept with him. She says he's married. He replies, since when has she started to care? He touches her. He likes it. She says he can sleep here. She will sleep with Sasha. He says he wants to talk about something. She declines. She knew when she saw his eyes for the first time. She couldn't give him up for adoption. He says they had sex. She knows it wasn't sex. He raped her. He says it's a lie. She composes herself. Mom knew it as well. That's why she never let Sasha and him meet. 